So I want to experiment a little more with this shape tracer program that we started in the previous video. Uh, you remember that we, we wrote this so that we ask the user how many sides are on the shape, we set the sides to their answer, and then that number of times we move 100 steps, turn some number of degrees based on a calculation that turns out to be right, right? 360 divided by sides gives me the sum of the interior angles. Uh, which, which have to be 360, and then we, we produce this. And, and if you were playing with this, if you were following along and playing with this, you may have discovered there's actually a problem with this at, at a certain point. Right? It works fine when we're putting in uh, things like squares, and it looks okay even with a, a pentagon. But as soon as I get to sufficiently large numbers of sides on my shapes, maybe I try to make an octagon, I put in eight, you discover that it doesn't quite work properly, and it takes a little bit to make this happen. First of all, you'll notice that it doesn't fit on the screen, and that's actually part of the problem. You'll recall in earlier uh, videos, we talked about the fact that when the cat is attempting to go off the screen, if you try to push it too far off the screen, it just stops going. And so what happens is, down here on, on this side here, as it's attempting to go down off the screen, at some point it gets far enough so it stops going down. Um, but then when it turns around and comes back up, it then comes up, you know, it ends up farther than it was supposed to. And so we have a couple of choices here. One is that we could just change the starting place, right? In zero, zero, the start of the, the middle of the stage is maybe a bad place for this. We might want to make it bigger so that it, that it comes up higher on the screen, right? I could uh, change my Y value to more like 100. And then if I'm making an octagon, he more or less stays on the screen, right? And that works OK, but again, even now if I get to sufficiently large shapes, maybe I want to make a 20-sided shape, uh, we're going to end up going off the screen by a long shot. And it just doesn't work. Let me take the time weight out of here so you can, it just doesn't work right. So the idea is that this 100 steps is perhaps not a good idea. 100 steps was good for a square. Uh, it's OK for the uh, triangle. It's too much for a 20-sided figure. The idea is that maybe we want to adjust this based on the number of sides. Uh, a quick and dirty way to make that adjustment is just to actually figure out, well, what's just like with the, the total number of degrees, we said we know we want the sum of all of the degrees to add up to 360. So figure out what each one needs to be, 360 divided by sides. We could actually sort of figure out th what the total perimeter of our shape can realistically be. Turns out that 600 is probably about a pretty good number for this, right? That, that I could have made a slightly larger square with sides of 150. I could have made a triangle with sides of, of you know, 200 each and still fit on the screen. And then with this 20-sided figure, uh, if the total perimeter is 600, then each side is relatively small. And so let's go back into the operations here and just change this. Let's change 600 divided by sides, right? and now we can adjust appropriately. If I say make a square, right? it makes a square with four sides of 150 each, and that works. And if I make a triangle, it makes a triangle with three sides of 200 each. But if I say give me a 20-sided figure, it gives me a figure with 20 sides 30, of length 30 each. 600 divided by 20 is 30. And you can start to see that really once I get down to, to 20, it, it almost starts to approximate a circle. Uh, in fact, I can make a circle with this. I can put in 360 sides, right? I mean, what is a circle? A circle is basically just a, a, a polygon with a really, really large number of sides of a very infinitesimal length each, right? And so there's my circle with 360. Let me make a, a dodecahedron, a 12-sided figure here, right? You can start to get a really nice shape for that. So now our program adjusts itself, produces a shape of a variable number uh, of sides and a variable length of sides based on input from the user. In the next lesson, we're going to add in more complex conditionals, more advanced kinds of checking, so that we can provide some error checking based on the kind of inputs that the user is actually providing to us.